only think in, ter in human terms. And oftentimes God, when he tried to show us the beauty of heaven, he had to deal with it in terms that our humanness could understand. So when he wanted to show us the beauty of heaven, he used precious stones. He talked about streets of gold. Gates made of pearls. Walls of jasper. And topaz. Sardonyx, emeralds. The heaven is not made up of jewels. Gold in itself is, has no real meaning. Gold is hard. The only thing that makes gold what it is, is it's worth. But God is trying to show us the beauty, and we will never be able to understand the beauty of heaven until, unless there's something that God can compare it with so that we as humans can understand it. That's why there's so much talk about fires in hell. God tries to get you to understand the torment of hell by using something that gives torment when you are touched by it, and that's fire. Amen. So Jesus was rich. Rich. In the estimation of all of the angels. So much so that the angels bowed down before him. Rich in that he created the universe, not just this earth, yeah. but all of the other planets and all of the other asteroids and all of the constellations and all of the things that are in the universe, rich yeah. in that he created it all, rich in that all the gold and the silver yeah. belongs to him, rich in that all of the precious stones belong to him, rich in all that the minerals of this earth uh, belong to him, rich. And that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him, rich. And for our sakes, for your sake and for my sake, he became poor, rich, but he became poor in that he gave up all of his wealth rich he gave it up and became poor in that he took upon himself human nature and was subject to all of his limitations poor in that he subjected himself to pain to misery yes even death poor being that he was born in a stable and not in a palace. Poor! And that although he was not a sinner, yet he died with sinners. Died like a sinner. Buried like a sinner. Buried in a sinner's tomb. Poor! Why? That through his poverty, we might be rich. And when I speak about being rich, I am not speaking, I am not speaking of material wealth. For money has no place beyond the grave. Do you remember the story of Lazarus and that nameless rich man who we have given uh, uh, the title of Dives? The Bible does not give him a name. Yes. Do you remember this rich man while he was alive dined sumptuously? He dined on the best foods of that day, that which we would look at as being caviar and lobster. Steaks. All of the wonderful foods that many of us, when we 
were young growing up, didn't even know what it was like to have it. When I was growing up, the, the, the most I could, closest I could come to a steak was a pork chop. And pork chop was not on our plate every day. What we had uh, to take the place of pork chop was, uh, uh, oh, I forget that, that, that food now that was in bones. It was, it, most of it was in bones and neck bones. Hey, y'all. Hey, praise the Lord. You had to sort of suck the food, the, the meat out from between the crevices. That neck bone, that's what I'm talking about. Now, some of you young people don't know anything about neck bones, but uh, uh, Elder McGee, he's the one that brought it to my mind. He knows about neck bones. Praise the Lord, because he's the one that said neck bones. He knew what I was talking about. Praise the Lord. We had, we had a whole lot of, we didn't have many pork chops, but we had a lot of neck bones. Yes, sir. This man dying sumptuously every day. The Bible said he was dressed in purple, which means, ladies and gentlemen, that he, he wore the best clothes. But this once proud and haughty man had nothing in hell. He wore no luxurious garments. He did not dine sumptuously. He didn't even have water to cool his parched tongue. He's, he said, uh, Father Abraham, send Lazarus down here that he might dip his finger in water and touch my parched tongue because I am tormented in this flame. He did not dine sumptuously. He did not wear uh, wonderful clothes. All he could say was, send Lazarus to my five brothers and tell them, don't come to this place of torment. Oh, that's a, that's a tremendous sermon right there. Yeah. Go and tell them, don't come here. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't come to this place of torment. Yeah. Jesus became poor that we might be rich, that we might not have to say, tell my brothers, don't come here. Rich, not in wealth, not in money, not in that. We don't, most of us would never be rich, never. Some of you all here already rich, I don't know. But most of us are working people. Yeah. Most of us cannot miss too many paydays before we start feeling the pinch. And some of us can't miss one. Yeah. I've arrived at a place now when I can miss two or three and I can still make it. But I remember a long time ago, or not too long ago, ladies and gentlemen, when uh, I could not miss a payday. Not only would I feel the pinch, it would be a catastrophe. Because the money was gone before I got it. I put the check in one hand, cashed it in the other, and sent it out to somebody else in the, uh, before I could even know I had it. So we're not talking about rich in money, but I'm talking about rich in the good news of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you are missing the best part of life. Yeah. We who have become rich, we who are fallen creatures, we who are sinful people, rebellious people, filled with pride, unable to do anything to save ourselves, yet the Lord laid upon Christ yeah. the iniquity of us all. We who had sins too numerous to count. Yes. And we know, according to our own human philosophy, that we should pay for our sins. But we see Jesus and the glorious redeeming love of God portrayed in the mystery of the cross. It was Jesus his substitutionary death it was Jesus who died on the cross for you and me and while I am talking just stop and think for a little bit and just think of what God has done for you even though you know that your sins have washed you to the degree that hell belongs to you. Yet, God 